He is risen. He is risen indeed. Awesome. Good job. Good job. I like what our good friend Godfrey Bertil says. Uh, he posted up on his Facebook, I think it was last year. He said, we is risen. Yep, yep, yep. We is risen. I, you know, some, sometimes, you know, some Christians don't make the transition from Good Friday to Easter Sunday. And you say, well, what do you mean by that? Well, some, sometimes, you know, uh, theologically or practically speaking, we stay kind of death-centric. In fact, um, I remember a certain period of my own theological past where, um, where I tended to major on uh, total depravity, my own depravity, my own humanity. I, I, I kind of enjoyed that particular kind of theological bent. And the reason why is because it, it resonated with me. I had enough of that old man, enough of that dead nature still integrated into my nature that that kind of theology gave me a certain sense of peace. It was almost kind of like uh, I would never really get to experience or live out the fullness of the righteousness of Christ, that I would always be just a sinner and um, uh, saved by grace, but still, you know, just a sinner. Uh, I like how John Crowder puts it. He says, you know, a lot of Christians, they believe that they're positionally righteous, but practically shady, right? So it's almost like um, God has to put up with me because of what his son did uh, on the cross. And I, I, I have uh, since kind of moved on from that sort of theology, and I really, 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 really believe, you know, that the cross is incredible, that, that the death of Christ is amazing. Thank you, Jesus, for the cross. Thank you for death. But that's not the end of the story, okay? Um, that the cross was just the beginning, and that we are not to be a death-centric, sin-centric, depravity-centric faith, that this thing is not about death, it's about life. And so um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. What it means to live, to, to have life and to have life abundantly. We're going to be reading out of Galatians chapter 6 um, verses um, 8 to 14. And I'll put the words up on the screen so that you, you have them. Um, now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Let's just pause there um, for a second. The first thing we need to talk about is recognizing our death. And, and how often do we die? Well, he says here, the death he died, he died to sin once. Okay, so... Uh, for all of us, it, this is not the kind of thing where we are to figure out how to be offing ourselves, like spiritually committing suicide each day. No, no, no. It, you are to die to sin once, and then you're to live life and life abundantly to God. But everybody loves the scripture verse where Paul talks about, I die daily. And thinking about that, that's some sort of, that's Paul saying that every day he spiritually commits suicide. And, and, and no, 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 no. He talks about Paul literally almost died daily. Like Paul's life was, you know, uh, uh, shipwrecked and stoned and, and bitten by poisonous snakes. And like Paul's life is, it was absolutely crazy. That's not a theological statement that we are to somehow stay death centric. No, we're to be life centric. But the life he lives, he lives to God. Listen, if you haven't experienced what it means to let the old man die, if you haven't experienced what it means to have that conversion point, that inversion point, that moment where your heart goes from darkness into life, that's where it begins. It begins by offing the old man and then stepping into that new creation reality where you get to go from glory to glory, right? From good to great. Let's keep reading. Verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought forth from death into life. And offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument 
of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but you are now under grace. So recognize you died. You've been there. You've done that. Some of you, that's been a long time ago. Some of you, you'll get to get dead today, right? The only way into life is through death. The only way to experience co-resurrection is to also experience co-crucifixion, right? So step one, we die with him. He, he died with us that, that we experience that place uh, uh, with him. And then we step into number two, we live in new life. Yeah, and what does that mean? That if we're living in life, if we realize that that death that's in, that's, that's in the past and now we're living in this place of, of abundant life, if we're going to really begin to experience this, it's important that we're not, that we're not meditating or dwelling or obsessing on our death nature, on the old parts of us, right? It's sometimes, um, you know, people will say to me, you know, uh, you know, they'll refer to themselves as though they've taken on a part of their past and they're still applying it as part of their present identity. And I'll be like, well, are you still struggling with that? Well, no. Then why are you still applying that title as part of your present identity? They'll say, because I did that in the past. Well, yeah. So, like, what you did in the past does not define you in the present. And to the degree that you're using old titles and putting it on you, you're just taking stuff that's dead and wearing it and putting it on you as part of your identity. Listen, that's not who you are anymore. You're not that person anymore. You're not doing that stuff anymore. Like, yeah, but every now and then a thought might come up. Yeah, that might not even be your thought. That might be this thing that's actually called temptation. Did you know that even Jesus was tempted? But it doesn't mean that he was depraved, that he was a sinner, that he was an alcoholic, that he was a sex addict, like that he was any of this stuff. Like just because you're tempted doesn't make you a sinner. That that's why we've got grace. Grace is not just that place. Grace is not just that place where we can do whatever we want. I do whatever I want, right? And then we can get away with it because of grace. Paul would say, heck no, that ain't good theology. That's dumb, dumb theology, right? Like what is grace? Grace is divine enablement to be able to do what you could never do and then accomplish yourself. That grace is the ability to be able to choose not to sin. Did you know that when you got the Holy Spirit in you, you can actually choose not to sin. You see, if we stay death-centric, if we stay depravity-centric, if we're all just running around, I'm just a sinner, I'm just a sinner, I'm just a sinner, that might look humble, but if you're just declaring that over yourself all the time, then what are you going to do? You're going to sin. You're going to sin all the time. Why? Because sinners sin. But if you believe that he who knew no sin became all of your sin so that you are now the present righteousness of Christ Jesus, now you don't get to wear that name tag anymore. Hello, my name is Sinner. Nope, not anymore. Why? That's the old you. That is the dead you. That is the depraved you. That is the part of you that went into the ground six feet under, you know, peace out, right? There is a new you, an alive you, an abundant you, the Christ you. And listen, I know that we're all over the timeline. I know that there are people that are watching this and you, and, and you don't believe in any of this stuff and yet you're watching it and you're maybe a little bit intrigued or entertained. There are other people and they've been Christians for years and yet they've never been told the good news. Gospel. <laughs> the word gospel. It means good news. Hey, Easter Sunday. It's a great, it's a great day. It's a happy day. It's a glorious day. Oh, happy day, happy day, right? Why? Because Jesus did not remain dead. He is alive and you do not have to remain dead. You can be alive. And, you know, uh, there's no time like the present. This is what we call the journey to awakening. Yep, that's what we call. Why? Because I've got my own journey to awakening. I could tell you about the dead Darren. I could tell you about the old Darren. I could tell you about the depraved Darren. We could have that story and sometimes we do talk about that, right? But this is what I know. That that Darren is dead. That, that the depraved Darren, that, that he, don't, he don't get to hang out anymore. We ain't, we ain't friends anymore. Now there's a, there's a new Darren. It's a live Darren. It's the Christ Jesus. That's this, this place of, I love this word. There's a word um, 
uh, imputed, right? Uh, oh, no, no. It's, uh, yeah, imputed righteousness, but it's the word appropriate. That's the word I'm looking for. Appropriation. The doctrine of appropriation. What does it mean? It means to put on. That when we say that, 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 that we have been given the righteousness of Christ Jesus, you have to realize that your old clothes, your old garments, your old stinky rags, your old religious performance, you're not wearing that anymore. That you've appropriated, you have put on the garments of Christ Jesus. You have put on the person of Christ Jesus. So recognize your death. And if you haven't died yet, right, get dead. Begin your relationship with Jesus and just put off all the old stuff, the, the, the ways of the flesh, the fruit of the flesh. And number two, step into life. And this life is the life of Christ Jesus because he is alive and because he lives, we also can live. But our journey to awakening doesn't just end with our own journey and the journey of Jesus. It's also this place where we recognize that the Christian narrative is radically, radically, inescapably corporate. That means that the cross is not just vertical, it's also horizontal. That this story isn't just about you and God and being at peace with God. It's also about being at peace with each other. And when we talk about death centricity or life centricity, when we talk about the implications of the good news on our life, so many times we can walk through the process of allowing God to forgive us. And we can sometimes learn how to forgive ourselves. But then comes the real challenge and the fruit of the gospel. Because Jesus lived and died and on the cross interceded and forgave those who were crucifying him without understanding the, the message of forgiveness, we can't really walk in and model what it means to be a Christian. For he who withholds forgiveness cannot take on the title or claim to be like Christ. Why? The very virtue of Christ Jesus is this incredible virtue of selfless love, compassion, and forgiveness. That when we stop forgiving, we stop living. And when we recognize that, that because of just mere love and grace alone, that he has washed our past, he's, he's removed it from us, that there is no record of our wrongs, that, 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 that our past will not be used against us in the court of heaven. When we realize that, now we've got not just an opportunity, but an obligation to begin figuring out how forgiveness and love and grace works within our lives and how we can appropriate it and extend it towards others who, like us, do not deserve it. That grace is undeserved kindness that is showered upon us from our Father. And in the same way that when we step into this fountain of, of life and life, and when we step into the source of unmerited favor, when we step into the source of limitless love and limitless joy and limitless peace, who are we then to put limits on our love and limits on our grace and limits on what we're willing to extend to others because of what they deserve? Grace is what defines the true Christian. Grace is what um, uh, 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 grace is what really allows for us to be like Jesus. That when we are robbed of grace or when we find justification for not extending grace, then we find ourselves with the right answers, the right theology, but now sitting with the Pharisees and sitting with those who really got their act together when Jesus never really hung out with people who had their act together. Jesus will hang out with those who didn't have the right answers, those who weren't living the, the right lifestyle, that when we find ourselves unable to extend forgiveness, unable to extend grace, we find ourselves in the fellowship of the Pharisees with a lot of head knowledge, but robbed of that heart connection that really 
sets us apart. I believe that we're coming into a time when Christians are going to start to get saved. I believe we're coming into a time where we're going to see a harvest of believers, where believers are going to start to get converted. I'm talking about people that go to church every Sunday. I'm talking about people that know their Bibles. I'm talking about people with really good theology. They're going to get converted. They're going to step into an awakening. They're going to step into a moment of true understanding of, I thought I have understood this whole thing, but, but at, at a certain point in time, I got off track. I, at a certain point of time, this thing became about me instead of about love and affection and grace and fellowship with others. I believe that we're all being wooed in this season into a season, into a journey of awakening. But perhaps there are barriers. Perhaps there are things that are keeping us from life and life abundantly. Perhaps there are even old parts of our nature, even dead parts of our nature that are trying to integrate and assimilate back into our identity and who we are. And let me just say it again, you are not your past and you are not the, the sum of all the decisions that you've made in the past. You're not even the sum of the decisions that you think you're going to make in the future. You are who he says you are. That before you knew you, he knew you. That in eternity past, he knew you. And he framed you and formed you for such a time as this. So recognize your death. Live in a new life. And be willing to see that other people should be given the opportunity to also be forgiven. And to be extended grace. If you're watching this and you say, Pastor Darren, I need forgiveness. Look, I get it. I've been there myself, right? And if you're watching this and you're like, I would love to be a Christian, but I think I would be a bad Christian. Look, I, I get that as well. <laughs> I, I know what it's like to be a bad Christian. But it's not about... <laughs> Any of what our thoughts are as far as what we think of like, sometimes we get so far in our head that we miss opportunities for our heart. Opportunities to get healed up. Opportunities to get reconnected. So I give you permission right now to slow down and to get out of your head for a second. To get out of your, the things that have traditionally triggered you about Christianity about morality, about religion, and about politics. To set all those distractions aside. And let's just come before Jesus. Let's acknowledge him. And let's allow for his Holy Spirit to awaken our hearts so that we could actually see who he really is. Because only then can we see ourselves for who we really are. And right now, what I'm basically looking for is just for anyone watching that's willing to invite Holy Spirit to come to awaken our hearts. And if you're watching this, and I'm not asking you to join our church. I'm not asking you to join my religion. I'm not asking you to tell me that I'm right. I'm just asking you, are you open-hearted? I'm not even asking you if you're open-minded. Are you open-hearted? Are you willing to open up your heart and allow Jesus to come? and to heal you, and to reconcile you. And if so, today is your day to transition from death into life, to transition from Good Friday into Easter Sunday, knowing that this isn't just a story about a one-time event that happened and it's done. That this really is an incredible invitation to participate with an eternal reality that can radically change you from the inside out. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, come. We invite you to come right now into every house, into every car, into every situation, into every storyline and narrative. Come and to every thought. Holy Spirit, come into our brokenness. Come into our darkness. Holy Spirit, come into our fear. Come into our shame. Come into our religiousness. Come into our pride. Holy Spirit, come. Come with light. Come with life. Come with truth. 
and reveal to us Jesus. Reveal to us this Savior who hung from a tree, who bled, who died because of love for us. This one who became the sum of all of our past imperfections, the, the, the one who became all of our brokenness, the one who took on himself all of our fractionness, the one who took on himself all of our confusion, the one who suffered in our place. We come before you right now. We acknowledge him. We acknowledge Jesus. And if you're watching right now, just whisper, Jesus, I acknowledge you. I acknowledge my need for you. I acknowledge my need to be saved from myself, saved from generational stuff, even saved from unhealthy spiritual stuff. Come right now. Come right now and rescue me. Wrap your arms around me. In Jesus' name, amen. And I believe that if you prayed that, if you welcome, I believe that, that there is right now an atmosphere, this place, this waltz, this dance between the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, and you. You are now a part of the family of God. Welcome. You are loved. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are an, uh, an heir that you now have inheritance and this is only the beginning this is the beginning of your awakening story and now when you look back on the most tragic parts of your past you will see that you don't have to cover it up you don't have to pretend like 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 it doesn't exist that now when you look back on the most on the saddest parts of your past you will now see that those parts of your past were a vital, important part of your awakening story. Now because of what Jesus is doing in you, you won't hold yourself above others, condemning others for their imperfection. Why? Because you'll still remember who you were before life. And because of that, you'll walk with compassion. You'll walk with a limp. You'll attract people to Christ instead of propelling people away from him. This is the beginning of a brand new reality, a brand new world. And if you prayed this prayer today, I want to invite you to send me off a quick email. I'll put my email up on the screen, Darren Stott at Seattle Revival Center. And just say, Pastor Darren, I prayed the prayer. Darren, uh, this has been a powerful weekend in my life. Just say, Darren, what's up? So that me and the team can reach out to you. That we can assist you. So that we can pastor you into this incredible journey. This awakening story. This awakening journey. This journey to awakening. And know this. That you're not the result of random chance. That this is, a, this is such a unique time in human history. And you're such a unique person. And that your scroll, you are living poetry, that this thing that you are, that God wants to use you to reveal and to glorify Him. Happy Easter. He's not dead. He's risen. You're not dead. You're alive. It's time to live life abundantly. Father, I pray that you bless each and every person watching right now. Lord, I pray that you would release faith and hope encourage into every home right now. Father, I pray, Lord, that any sort of lies that have been trying to stir up fear and confusion in our hearts and our homes and our children, that those things would be illuminated and kicked to the curb right now. And Father, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would come and bring life thoughts into all of our, into all of our minds. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you'd loose right now life emotions and to each and every person watching right now, that any sort of emotions that have been equated and tied to 
death, any sort of death emotions or death wishes or death curses, we, we, we declare the blood of Jesus right now to break those death emotions, those death ties, those death wishes and death curses. We thank you, Father, that because of your blood, all of those things are broken right now. Right now, right now, right now. We thank you, Father. It is finished. And therefore, it has begun. Love you guys. Love you, love you, love you.